shift your mindset because it will shift your business. You are someone that feels either they're not ready financially, emotionally, mentally to, you know, hire on support. I would say shifting your mindset would look like looking at it on the other side of how much more can I get done if I let someone lighten this load for me? And that mindset shift is really going to help shift and propel your business to the next level because you're now going to be in a place where you see that person as an asset versus a price tag. to the Good Enough Mompreneur podcast, where we celebrate the imperfect journey of mom entrepreneurs who are seeking to build businesses without having to trade off the joy of motherhood. I'm your host, Angela Micheli, and today's episode is a treasure trove of inspiration, insights, and transformative conversation that could ignite your entrepreneurial journey. In the spotlight is Ashley Aline, a former school psychologist turned CEO of Overwhelmed to organized virtual assistants. In just nine months, Ashley's agency has empowered entrepreneurs to reclaim their time, focusing on their strengths. Today, she shares her journey and unveils the secrets to scaling businesses to six and seven figures. Ashley's story is one of profound transformation from societal norms to financial freedom pursuits. Inspired by podcasts like Earn Your Leisure and Market Mondays, she reshaped her mindset leading to the creation of a virtual assistant agency that transcends traditional support roles. Overwhelmed to organize virtual assistants stands out as a brand deeply invested in client success, emphasizing the importance of acknowledging and seeking support for scaling businesses. If you've ever felt the solo business struggle or aimed for six and seven figure milestones, this episode is your guide. Ashley Aline imparts expertise on transferable skills, mindset shifts, and mastering virtual assistant tasks. Join us for a conversation that could redefine your entrepreneurial approach, showcasing that building a business is about creating a life of financial security and independence. So grab your favorite beverage and help me welcome Ashley Aline to the podcast. Ashley, thank you for being on the podcast today. Welcome. I have Ashley Aline, the founder and CEO of Overwhelmed to Organized Virtual Assistance. I think that that's a great name because so many entrepreneurs are overwhelmed. And I also really want to dive into your story and how you became an entrepreneur. So welcome and thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here and speak with you and your audience today. <laughs> yeah, I I know they will learn lots from you today because as we were talking just before we pushed record, it's hiring an assistant can be one of the biggest hurdles for new and growing businesses. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say about that. But first, set the stage for us and tell us about where you started and where you were and what was the light switch that went off for you to go, I'm going to start my own thing. <laughs> I am so glad you asked that question. It's my favorite question to answer. <laughs> so I started my business a year ago in September of 2022. So I'm like a, a year and a month in, you know, <laughs> Um, and it has been, it has been a ride, but I have been enjoying every moment of it. Um, where I got started was I would say back in 2020, 2021, what really kicked it off for me was listening to business podcasts. And one of my favorites at that time was earn your leisure. 
And that's a business entrepreneurship podcast where they have guests on there that speak about how they grew and scaled their businesses and Mm -hmm. all of the mistakes they made and the lessons that they learned. And one of the episodes that really stuck with me was where they talked about how you will never truly be free as long as you work for someone else. And that is something that really stuck with me. And it was just like replaying in my head, replaying in my head. (laughs) And I knew from there that I did want to start a business, but I just wasn't sure. So my background is in psychology. I am a licensed school psychologist. So my career was as a school psychologist, I was doing mandated and at-risk counseling with middle schoolers. So specifically seventh and eighth graders. (laughs) So I have always worked with children. That was one of my many passions. Mm -hmm. And I loved working with children, Mm -hmm. but thing that was wrecking my brain was I wasn't sure on how to, you know, translate that into a business. And I Mm -hmm. thought that it had to be related to children. I thought it had to be related to psychology. I wasn't really sure. So really listening to other people's stories about how they started their businesses, the wheel started turning Mm -hmm. and I started to think about, okay, what are my skills that I have? What are the things that come naturally naturally to me what are the things that come easy to me like what what am I really good at what are my strengths and that really allowed me to realize that what I was doing every day at work was easily translatable (laughs) into Mm -hmm. a business as skills that people will definitely need and pay for Mm -hmm. so some of those transferable skills was like being responsive like attentive to email attentive to text messages and teachers were text me like, Hey, Ashley, come get this child. <laughs> you know, yeah. can you come during crisis? So I have to be responsive. I have to be. Mm-hmm. So that was one thing, um, being completely organized. I had to follow a daily schedule for my counseling sessions, right? I had to pick up students from their class, have the session, get them back to class on time. So being organized, following a schedule, all of these things I started to really like take into consideration, like you're already doing it. You don't need to overthink it, you know? Mm -hmm. So from there, it was like, okay, here are the skills that I'm great at. Here are the things that I can potentially translate into a business. And then I learned what a virtual assistant was. (laughs) And I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. I can do this, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So ever since then, that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And Overwhelmed to Organize Virtual Assistance was born. I love that story for many reasons. One, you know, it takes bravery to kind of do something different than you've always done, you know, that identity. And I also know people who have... Oftentimes, when you're in this role that is directly impacts people who need you, like children, the elderly, it's very hard to break away from that because it is so important and do what you're really called to do. So did you have to overcome that or how did you overcome that? So in a sense, yes. Like, absolutely. (laughs) Because Mm -hmm. how I was raised, like, I'm not the first person in my family to go to college. Like, I don't have that story. The norm was you graduate high school, you go to college. The Mm -hmm. only question was, what college are you going to? Right? That was the standard. That was the bar that was set. And Mm -hmm. for me to kind of, I went, I graduated with my bachelor's degree, graduated with my master's degree. And for me to only use that degree for X number of years, and then completely pivot because now I'm full-time as an entrepreneur. It's it was it was a shock. But thankfully my family was very supportive. And it also took a lot of unlearning in the sense that the world that my parents prepared me for no longer exists. And it's no longer you go to school, you go to college, you get a good job, you work 30, 40 years, and then you retire, right? That's not the norm anymore. Mm-hmm. And we have people on TikTok, 19 years old, making millions of dollars, right? That's the world that we live in now. Mm -hmm. And the age of entrepreneurship is happening at a much younger age for, Mm -hmm. you know, our youth. And I really had to shift my mindset on what success looks like for me. And ultimately it goes back to the, you will never be free as long as you work for someone else, because as long as you work for someone else, there will always be a cap on your income level someone else is always going to tell you what you're able to make. And that was no longer what I wanted to be a part of. I wanted to, you know, set my own pricing, 
mm-hmm. generate as much revenue as I can and not have a ceiling on that. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot, it was a huge shift. <laughs> Right. And, you know, you're still also having a very valuable impact. I mean, you're helping entrepreneurs and business owners scale their businesses with impact. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can't lose sight of that either. It's not like you, you're just going to chase an income potential. I mean, would you say that you have felt that you have greater fulfillment and impact? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. This is what I, this is the reason why I do this. I've always loved helping people. I've loved helping children. That was always my calling. I was always Mm -hmm. the friend that people call for advice. Like Mm -hmm. I was always that person. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to my transferable skills. Like, because I am a psychologist, I know how to get people talking. I know how to speak to people. I'm Mm -hmm. personable and setting a comfortable environment for people to really open up and share the vulnerabilities of their business with me, because Mm -hmm. your virtual assistant is your right hand right right? and you have Mm -hmm. this is the person that you have to be honest with Mm -hmm. oftentimes we are the first hire in -hmm. someone's business and that's why I specifically work with solopreneurs because I want that impact I want the one-on-one I want to help them grow from zero to you know six figures Mm -hmm. and I like being that person that that Mm -hmm. is what brings me joy (laughs) like helping someone really grow their what grow their dreams right being a part of that story that's what brings me the most impact. So do you primarily work with women or do, it doesn't matter? But No, it does not matter. Yeah. Uh, right now, I only work with women. <laughs> right. But I mean, but, that's like another layer to in your yes. impact in that we need more entre- female entrepreneurs. We need mm-hmm. more um, women with that earning potential, with the decision making, with their dollars. And to have the support to be able to do that is... It's really invaluable. So Mm -hmm. I think that's just so brave of you to do because personally having to make that identity shift for myself and it's very hard. (laughs) And maybe your psychology background really benefited you. You're like, wait a minute. (laughs) No, but it was still hard. It was still hard. It was because there was also the fear of, dis- of disappointing, you know, your family, your parents, like mm-hmm. my parents paid to put me through school. And it's like, what do you mean you're no longer using this degree? You know, mm-hmm. so there was a lot of like mental preparation, right. like, you know, <laughs> that went into that. So, yeah. yeah. All right. I, I just think that that is such an amazing story. And so, you know, I love to talk to guests like yourself where it's like you have two stories. You've got your story that inspires you to make that big change, which is so hard for so many of us. But then let's talk about what your business does and some of the solutions that you solve for your clients. Yes, definitely. So the current offers and services that I provide are email management, email marketing, creating your standard operating procedures specifically for business coaches, and then also creating any workflows and automations that you need. And that's also for business coaches. So with the email management, a lot of times like my clients are missing opportunities because they're not on top of their email, right? So where I come in is that I'm monitoring your email on a daily basis basis. So that way I'm constantly alerting you. Okay. You have this opportunity. There's this grant that you should apply for. There's this event that you should be attending because people are sending them the information, but they're missing it because they're Mm -hmm. so overwhelmed with running everything else in the business, right? Mm -hmm. With email marketing, I have a lot of clients that want to be consistent in reaching their communities. But again, to sit down and write a newsletter is just not feasible within their schedule. So where I come in is that they provide the vision for the newsletter, they provide some of the copy, and then I take it, I elevate it, and then, you know, they approve it, I schedule it out, right? That way they're having several touch points with their community. They're still able to get their offers out there to their community via email. And that way their audience is constantly being nurtured. Mm -hmm. With the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, a lot of business owners, their processes live in their head. (laughs) And (laughs) if you want to hire someone and bring on a team, eventually they cannot live in your head, right? (laughs) 
So what I help specifically business coaches do is really take what is in their head, put it into documents and or video trainings that when they hire and onboard their team members, as you know, they continue to grow, it's an easy onboarding process, right? It's like, here's how you do this. Here's your job description. Here's how you do all of these duties that are within your job description. And mm -hmm. it's a much smoother onboarding process. Mm -hmm. And then with the workflows and automations, it's really, okay, taking those SOPs and determining what can be automated. What have you been doing manually for so long that now we can use a system to do it for us? Mm -hmm. So the specific system that I use is Dubsado. And that's really helping business coaches complete their onboarding process all through a workflow automation. Mm -hmm. And from the time that a person fills out their interest form all the way to the time that they have their very first call with that person, that system can get completely automated. So those are just a few examples of how, of the services that I provide. I love that. And one thing I realized as you were describing all of those details is I love how you value the strengths and your abilities that you brought to your previous job because we so often don't give ourselves credit for mm -hmm. being something like responsive because people think, well, isn't everybody? No. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, I love how you brought all of those things and you were able to take an assessment and then turn them into like something that you could offer anybody um, to improve their businesses. So how were you able to kind of get clear on the services that you wanted to offer? Because I find that so interesting and it's a sticking point for a lot of people on getting clear on that. So do you want the truth? <laughs> <laughs> sure. We're all about truth here. <laughs> I, this has happened, like I would say September was my month, September of this year was my month mm -hmm. of clarity, mind you, uh -huh. a year in business. And I feel like I was just offering a ton of services, mm -hmm. just like when I was doing my market research and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, what are other virtual assistants offering? Mm -hmm. What do I feel comfortable offering? Like, mm -hmm. so I was just offering, you know, several services mm -hmm. and I had to really get clear on what am I actually good at? Like, right. and how can I position myself so that I am so so that the people that need my support can find me, right? Mm -hmm. They say that when you target everybody, you really target no one. So mm -hmm. I had to really get clear on what are my strengths? What can I deliver on my, you know, my promise mm -hmm. <laughs> for helping these clients? Right. And what will have the greatest impact, mm -hmm. right? So based on that evaluation, I was able to determine what services I need to offer that mm -hmm. will have the most impact that also align with what I'm good at, I'm actually good at doing. Mm -hmm. No, and I think that that's such a great answer, not only in that it shows your strength in offering services to your clients, but I think anybody in business should constantly be in that reiteration phase. Like, is this working? Is it not? Everything is constantly an experiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, and you know, if you stay stagnant, you're not responding to feedback or changes in the market or, you know, it is in two clarity comes with action. Mm -hmm. So um, anybody who's sitting and waiting for clarity, <laughs> you have to take some action <laughs> to get it. You do. You do. And don't be afraid to pivot because it's mm -hmm. also, we get like, oh, I've been offering this for so long and mm -hmm. or this is what I'm known for. And like, how mm -hmm. are people going to respond? Like, those thoughts are valid and mm -hmm. they will come up, but ultimately you're the one that's running the business mm -hmm. and you have to provide this service. And if you feel like you need a pivot or if something else comes along that you really enjoy doing, mm -hmm. try it out, you mm -hmm. know, and, and give your clients a heads up. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with changing your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and oftentimes it's really us getting in the way, like, oh, how are they going to respond? Like, are they going to be okay with it? And sometimes your clients might follow you to that new offer. They might be like, I, that's exactly what I need. So yeah, let's do that also, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And that way you won't have to start from scratch with finding people to provide this new service to. 
pitch it to your current clients and see how they respond to it. They might even give you in the moment feedback on how you can make that offer even better. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's all just such great advice because it is true. We just constantly have to also be in the business of getting out of our own way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and quite honestly, one of the best things that helped me do that and to create the headspace to find more clarity and growth in my business was hiring an assistant. So, I mean, we underestimate the value of mental energy um, <laughs> in trying to do it all. Like we were talking before, you know, I think women are just conditioned to be the caretakers and to not ask for help and mm -hmm. to, um, you know, be all things to all people, no matter if we're at work or as an entrepreneur or whatever our role is. So can you help us unpack how we can be better at <laughs> unlearning <Absolutely>. that? <laughs> Absolutely. I, it's not going to happen overnight. That's just the reality of it. And a lot of us have been so accustomed, as you mentioned, it's like, oh, I'll just do it myself or mm -hmm it'll take me longer to explain it to someone when I could just do it myself. And mm -hmm. oftentimes what you think may take you five, 10 minutes, you mm -hmm. might spend an hour on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the biggest mindset shift is just because I can do it doesn't mean that I should be the one doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about it in $10 tasks versus a thousand dollar task, right? Mm -hmm. Should you be doing the $10 task in your business right. or should you be focusing on the tasks that can bring about a bigger return on your investment of that time spent working on it? So my specialty is I help people reclaim their T and that stands for your time, your energy and attention, mm -hmm. right? And as a virtual assistant, you need to be the CEO of your business, right? I come in as your assistant to assist you in the things that you already do great. Mm -hmm. That is where your time, energy, and attention should be focused, right? right? Not on managing your email, not on, you know, trying to figure out your next topic for your newsletter. Like mm -hmm. not like that's not what your energy needs to be on because mm -hmm. you need to be servicing your clients. You need to be creating that offer. You need to be elevating your offer, making the tweaks, Right. Those mm -hmm. are things that are going to bring about a greater return on your investment versus worrying about these lower level tasks mm -hmm. for admin stuff that can be easily done by someone else. The thing is, you do have to be willing to at least start documenting the things that you have been doing so that when you bring someone in, mm -hmm. they're not necessarily starting from scratch, right? They have mm -hmm. some idea of how you do things or at least be really great at explaining it. And my mm -hmm. favorite thing is like, just record a video of you doing the thing send it to yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I've done that. and and that's it. <laughs> that's and, it. Yeah. If you use Zoom like I'm using right now, you can use Zoom to record your screen and just yeah, I've done that totally. And it's pretty pretty quick. Yeah. And it takes the pressure off, right? Because you might think, oh, I have to do this whole thing. And it's just like, no, just do it like you normally would. Yeah, Hit you're before. doing it once instead <laughs> of forever in the future, instead right. of having somebody else help you with that. Um, so what are maybe some of the biggest aha moments that maybe your clients have had that they didn't realize would be a benefit of getting a virtual assistant? <laughs> well, the biggest aha is why didn't I do this sooner? <laughs> yes. Why did I wait so long? Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is like, oh my gosh, you can help with that too. <laughs> like that mm -hmm. was like, that's the biggest thing as mm -hmm. well. But I always tell my clients, just ask, even if it wasn't something we previously discussed, just ask mm -hmm. and I'll let you know, versus mm -hmm. you just assuming that it's something that I can't help with. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest, biggest aha is how much freed up time they have to actually do the things that they want to do. One of my clients was able to finish her website finally, something she's been putting off for years. And it's just that relief of like finally, finally accomplishing what you wanted to accomplish is mm -hmm. just like, wow. Like mm -hmm. that's my ROI right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can totally identify with that. And the thing is, is that we don't think it's possible or we we think 
you know, oh, that's not really going to happen for me, or I'm going to have to explain things. And, you know, but really, it's putting the work in in the front end to free up your time. It's going to, it's always like a difficult transition. It's, there's a mm -hmm. transition period of like learning how to work with somebody and whatnot. So mm -hmm. one thing I was thinking about, what are some tips that we can do? And you mentioned one documenting your processes, which I think is brilliant and she, you should be doing regardless. So mm -hmm. even if you're not at the point where you can bring somebody on when you do, that transition is going to be easier for you. Mm -hmm. um, but what are some of the things that we can do better as entrepreneurs to work with an assistant? The first thing is be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one, be honest. Yes. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, know that we don't expect you to know everything. Like you don't have to have all the answers. Mm -hmm. So that also takes, you know, some pressure off yourself as well. And know what you want. Mm -hmm. Know what you want. Know what you're looking for in the service so that you can explain it to them thoroughly. So that once they're in it, they have a good understanding of what the role is, what exactly they're doing mm -hmm. and always state what your expectations are or your preferences so mm -hmm. that's a great starting point mm -hmm. yeah you definitely have to be invested like you have to be invested in cultivating that relationship with your assistant mm -hmm. because I think they're only going to be as good as you support them or um, mm -hmm. the information you give them and so what type of feedback is helpful? Like, is there a way that we can provide feedback or when we receive, give feedback that is like, you're like, oh, I like that. Is there something we can do like that? Because I think it's so important to, and I think the online, you know, relationship kind of gets in the way. You can't see somebody's reaction when they see something you did that's really amazing and you know so yeah what are what are some of the things we can do like that sure so th my biggest thing is I'm big on feedback so I typically meet with my clients new clients we meet on a weekly basis my mm -hmm. more seasoned clients we meet on a bi-weekly basis mm -hmm. every agenda there's always a moment for feedback and that is your opportunity. We're on Zoom, we're in our meeting, and that mm -hmm. is your opportunity to, you know, share verbally whatever your feedback is mm -hmm. on the work that I've done across mm -hmm. the week or two weeks. And then secondly, every time I send a, ta a completed task for review, mm -hmm. I always say, what are your thoughts on this? Is there mm -hmm. anything that needs to be is there anything that needs to be changed? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's a no, sometimes it's a yes. Mm -hmm. And my clients are really great about sharing, like, you know, they might send a voice note, mm -hmm. uh, which is really good for like tone, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh -huh. if you have a, yeah, if you have a concern about how this may come across in a text message or, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a message, mm -hmm. send a voice note. So that way, you know, the person can hear how you're saying it mm -hmm. and then also, or send a text. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then it's on me to make those edits and then I send it back to you for review. So I'm pretty open with it and I haven't had any issues with it so far, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I do provide the space. I do provide mm -hmm. the, the space. And then if your virtual assistant doesn't provide the space, ask like, hey, like there's something that I wanted to speak with you about um, that assignment that you did the other day. Here mm -hmm. are my thoughts on that. And then mm -hmm. having a conversation about that. If it's something more urgent, what I encourage my clients to do is to ask to have a call. Mm -hmm. um, so that way we're not having that conversation via text or, you know, where we can't really hear each other out. So mm -hmm. like, let's schedule a call so that we can do a deeper dive into, mm -hmm. you know, your concerns. Mm hmm those are really great tips because that can be hard. And I think a voice note is a great idea for trying not to convey like a, an unintended tone, <laughs> so, which is so easy. I mean, it's like texts and emails are like not great and for that. And then too, sometimes people don't have time for a phone call. So I think that that's a really great tip. So I would love to hear some of your tips that 
you know, as entrepreneurs, we can use to incorporate to scale our businesses to the six and seven figures. <laughs> Definitely. So the very first one is obvious, hire virtual assistant. <laughs> Yes, um, I mean, but... I don't think you can do it without that unless you're like some unicorn <laughs> entrepreneur, you know? <laughs> right. And the reality is that you can't scale as one, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to hit that six and seven figure mark, you cannot be doing all of the things. You cannot be the CEO, the admin, the runner. Like you just can't, you can't be everywhere at once in your business. You will never grow, right? You will always mm -hmm. hit a plateau. Mm -hmm. So number one is I would say, identify the tasks or areas in your business that you want to delegate to someone else. Mm -hmm. create a description of what those tasks include mm -hmm. and then start meeting with you know potential hires to see if that's something that they specialize in right i gave i shared earlier i focus on very specific tasks so mm -hmm. don't look for me if you're looking for content creation you know <laughs> for example <laughs> um just getting very specific on what that virtual assistant is their zone of genius which is what they're good at so mm -hmm. be be mindful of that and then secondly, I would say, get very clear on your offer, right? You have to be able to say your offer, share your offer in like one to two sentences, three sentences max, and mm -hmm. really get clear on your messaging, who your offer is for, who your offer mm -hmm. is not for, which is just as important mm -hmm. um, because when you call everyone in, you're for no one, right? You want to get very specific on who your offer is for, and then Thirdly, I would say document your processes and begin to automate the things that you can automate because the more you automate, the more you free up your time to focus on other money generating tasks. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things. Hire a virtual assistant, but do your research <laughs> and also, also get clear on what you want them to support you with. Mm -hmm. The second one was, I forgot that fast. <laughs> <laughs> the second one was just oh getting clear on your offer mm -hmm. and the yeah. third one was really documenting your processes get it out mm -hmm. of your head put it onto paper or write it down as a brain dump in your laptop and really see what you can automate to free up your time mm -hmm. yeah I I think those are all really great um points um and then two, what are, I'd love to ask people, what do they, what is something that we can automate that we often overlook? Is there something that comes to mind? 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> onboarding process. Your so onboarding that, process. It's oh, your onboarding gotcha. process. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. That is the number one thing, in my opinion, that can be automated, right? Mm -hmm. So you create a form, someone completes your form. That triggers an automated email where they're sent a, th a thank you for completing the form. Thank you for your interest. Mm -hmm. And then the link to schedule a call with you. They mm -hmm. can set up your calendar so that, you know, you have designated times on your calendar where mm -hmm. you can accept calls. They can choose a time that works best for their schedule. Mm -hmm. And if you need any follow-up information, you can mm -hmm. send that to them automatically. And then from there, all you have to do is have the call. <laughs> and yeah. I think that's the easiest, like your onboarding process is one of the easiest things to automate. Yeah, I think that that is like, if you're still coordinating times with somebody via emails or texts or something like that, um, take a look at calendar options <laughs> like Calendly or mm -hmm. um, and setting up a simple, some workflows that you can definitely automate that kind of stuff. But um, that's a really good tip if you're in a service-based business um, that mm -hmm. has that type of thing for sure. So one of the things too I was curious about is how did you find success in marketing your business and getting clients? Because that's another thing that when I talk to mm -hmm. people, they're just like, I don't even know how to tell people where I'm at and what I do. <laughs> Definitely. So I started with, I sent a text <laughs> to everyone in my contact list. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's how I started. So what I did was I created my Instagram page. I had mm-hmm. like at least three posts on there because my call to action was like, okay, follow me on Instagram mm-hmm. or share this with someone. Mm-hmm. And I just created a, a text message, mm-hmm. literally sent it to every single person in my contact list. Mm-hmm. And what you want to ask them, it could be one of two ways to take action, either hire you mm-hmm. or they can share your information with someone else that they know. That's two things that you can ask them to do in that text Mm -hmm. message, tell them all about your business Mm -hmm. and go from there. Mm -hmm. That was when I first started. Mm -hmm. My goal for 2023 was to attend at least one networking event every single month. Mm -hmm. And I've done good. (laughs) It's October. I probably missed, I missed like two months. I missed my birthday month and another month, but that's okay. So eight Mm -hmm. out of 10 months. (laughs) Um, And I have gained my most clients from going to networking events oh, and, that's building, and building my community, telling people mm-hmm. what I do, because mm-hmm. all the networking events I go to are for entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. What do entrepreneurs need? Help. Mm-hmm. So it's like, they're always like, oh my God, I need a virtual assistant. Right. So when they meet me, it's like, oh my God, my prayers have been answered. You know, they get really excited. Like, how that's can we work great. together? Mm-hmm. So definitely putting yourself out there. If it's industry specific, Mm -hmm. go to your industries, you know, networking events. The Mm -hmm. cheat code is I just go on eventbrite, eventbrite Mm eventbrite.com. And I just search my area. I put Mm -hmm. in my zip code or I put in where I live. Mm -hmm. And it could be a free event. It could be a paid event. You can filter Mm -hmm. it however you like. Mm -hmm. That's how I find that's the easiest way that I search for networking events in my neighborhood. And then also joining online communities. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Rachel Rogers's um, Hello7 membership, Mm -hmm. and she has a private Facebook group where people are always looking for, you know, some type of support in there. Mm -hmm. I could just reply to their post, and then Mm -hmm. we move that conversation to a DM, Mm -hmm. and then we set up a call and go from there. So Mm -hmm. it depends on your industry, but Mm -hmm. the biggest thing is telling your network, because you have a network, whether you Mm -hmm. believe it or not. Mm -hmm telling people that you know, and Mm -hmm. also going to any networking events in your neighborhood Mm -hmm. or industry specific networking events to get your business name out there and then get comfortable talking about your business Mm -hmm. and your offer. Right. And I like that, you know, you mentioned in-person and online events Mm -hmm. were, you know, successful for you and that, you know, anybody can find time to do one or the other. Um, So I really like that, that, that recommendation. So what do you wish you would have known sooner in your business for somebody who? (laughs) Uh, I wish I would have known that you have to pay for everything on your own. (laughs) For example, health insurance, (laughs) that was a bill I was not ready for, (laughs) you know, and Mm -hmm. just it's just the the little things that you, the security and comfortability that you have in your nine to five or your full-time job, Mm -hmm. it it is very different on the other side. It is Mm -hmm. very rewarding, but just because you make $5,000 a month, that Mm -hmm. does not, that $5,000 belongs to you. (laughs) (laughs) Because you have to pay for your software, you have to pay your Mm -hmm. CPA, you have to pay all of these other expenses, like Mm -hmm. the business expenses first, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you get what's left over Mm -hmm. so that is that is the biggest thing Mm -hmm. I wish I would have known much Mm -hmm. much sooner (laughs) Mm -hmm. no that's a good that's a good piece of advice because I think you can have so much momentum and with your idea to start your business and the reality of having to deal with you know extra things that you didn't as an employee (laughs) it it can be a lot (laughs) For sure. But you did mention that it's worth it. So how has becoming an entrepreneur changed your life? Like, how is that? I mean, you've you've now been able to go full time in your business. And so how is that look like? So it is amazing because my favorite thing is owning my schedule. Like that's the favorite, my my most favorite thing about this is owning my schedule and knowing exactly what I have to do at the time that I have to do it and having time freedom. That was, that was the ultimate goal, right? Impact 
and time freedom. Mm -hmm. I have the flexibility to go to the gym five days a week now, you mm -hmm. know, at 1 p.m. in the afternoon where I didn't have that luxury when I was working, right. you know, full time. And it'll look different for all of us, but like mm -hmm. finding those moments to really reflect on what your business has allowed you to do, mm -hmm. I think is huge. And for me, it was really reclaiming my time to spend it with the people that I love, doing the things that I love to do and being in control of my time. Yeah, I I think I'm like you. I just can't imagine not having that control of my time. But I also talk to people and coach them on they kind of don't know what to do with themselves when they have control of their time. Are there any tips that you can give us on focusing and making sure that you're doing what you need to do in your business? Because I think a lot of people don't trust themselves or find themselves kind of lost. <laughs> I have the perfect thing, but for starters, creating a schedule. Yeah. Creating a schedule. And mm -hmm. I have a free guide that I'm going to share with you all at the end awesome. of this. It is Love called it. Overwhelmed to CEO. Mm -hmm. And it is going to help you assess all of your business needs, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in the beginning. It's going to mm -hmm. walk you through how you can track your time mm -hmm. so that you know how long certain tasks in your business are taking you. And it's also going to help you create a daily schedule that you can follow. And there's video tutorials in there where I literally walk you through how to build out your daily schedule. And then using that time to really work towards your goals. So it is a step-by-step -step guide. It walks you through everything and it's really going to help you set your business up for success mm -hmm. and really getting organized. That sounds amazing. <laughs> that, that really does. I'm going to check that out uh, <laughs> just because I always want to make sure that I'm thinking of everything and I can't wait to check out your tips because that sounds really incredible. Um, so for anybody listening, what's like one tech takeaway that you want listeners to walk away with from this conversation? I would say shift your mindset because it will shift your business. Mm -hmm. And if you are someone that feels either they're not ready financially, emotionally, mentally to, you know, hire on support, mm -hmm. I would say shifting your mindset would look like looking at it on the other side of how much more can I get done mm -hmm. if I let someone lighten this load for me? Mm -hmm. And that mindset shift is really going to help shift and propel your business to the next level mm -hmm. because you're now going to be in a place where you see that person as an asset versus a price tag where it's like, oh my gosh, I have to pay this person X number <laughs> of dollars a month. And versus, oh, what is the return on investment going to look like from me bringing this person into my business? Is that more time? Is that more energy? Is that more focused attention I can put towards working towards my business goals? So shifting your mindset, it will shift your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's something we can hear enough of because we just don't seem to value our time even if we can do it we see it as free but we don't consider like I said the mental workload in addition to the time energy that something takes so two do you offer like a free consultation or something like that that's awesome yeah. because if it's something that you think you want to do but you just want to dip your toes in the water and just connect with somebody and get f more familiar about what it would be like, definitely take advantage of that free call to just connect with somebody and, you know, let it marinate in your brain or whatever because um, I think it's just one of the most important steps that you can take in your business to uh, finally bring on that person be there financially and emotionally and mentally <laughs> yeah and that. yeah you hit the nail on the head that's one thing that I didn't mention but it is a relationship you yeah. and your virtual assistant it is a partnership mm -hmm. it is a yeah. relationship and 
you the how you guys vibe how you guys get along mm -hmm. how you communicate those are all signs so again it goes back to the hiring process yes this person may check off all the boxes on you know the support that you're looking for but when you show up to that call you know notice if they're on time notice how they're running that that call like mm -hmm. these are the other things that you need to be mindful of like are they prepared for the call mm -hmm. you know um those are like what's the word qualitative <laughs> information mm -hmm. and data mm -hmm. that you can take into consideration before you say okay i'm going to move forward with this person and figure out how they make you feel do they make you feel comfortable on the call mm -hmm. do you feel confident that they can really do the thing that they say that they're going to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, those are all things that you can pick up on the call and mm -hmm. ask questions mm -hmm. ask questions Right. And I, like you said, I think it's so important for us to just take a step back and really assess what it is that we need. I'm sure, and I always invite comments and ideas and suggestions, but you really have to take some time to get clear as possible. I mean, that evolves on what it is you want and what you need and the type of person that you would like to work with and the strengths that you would like them to have and the tasks you'd like them to do. Because like you said, not every assistant does the same thing or feels confident in everything. And it, I just think that as a leader and as an entrepreneur, your team is only going to be as strong and as clear as you are. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yep. I really encourage everybody to take that time to assess and show up as your best self to lead your team. So I appreciate, Agree. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate your time, Ashley. I think you had so many great points to take away. And I hope that listeners who want to connect with you do and where should they do that? <laughs> Yes, I am on Instagram at overwhelmed to organized underscore VA. And mm -hmm. the two is TO, not the number. <laughs> gotcha. I love it. No, that's wonderful. Um, and I will put that link in the description. And thank you so much, for Ashley, for your time. It's been great connecting with you and learning about your business and your story. I'm sure it's helped so many listeners today. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Angela, for having me. And don't forget to download Overwhelmed to CEO. It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Ashley for joining us on this episode of the Good Enough Lompreneur podcast. To connect with Ashley and to check out her free resource, be sure to click on that in the show notes below. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you. I know all of us have such limited time and thank you so much for joining us and sharing your time with Ashley and I on this episode. Remember, as you navigate your mompreneur journey, remember that success is a journey, not a destination. Take Ashley's lessons to heart, embrace change, and always strive for the life you envision. Until next time, keep chasing your dreams, finding joy in the imperfections, and celebrating the incredible journey being a mompreneur. This is your host, Angela Mishuli, and I cannot wait to talk to you on the next episode of the Good Enough Mompreneur Podcast. Mm -hmm.